If you like venturing off the beaten track, as I clearly do, and you like your SUVs vaguely luxurious and coupe inspired, you sport for choice. You've got the BMW X6, you've got the Mercedes GLE Coupe, and countless others. And actually, Audi has a horse in this particular race with this thing, the Q8. And this happens to be the latest version with better technology and better looks, apparently. But does it stack up? Today we find out. We've come all the way to beautiful South Africa to have a look at this next-gen rival to the BMW X6 and Mercedes GLE Coupe. Prices start from £75,000 for the base Q8 and £97,000 for the sporty SQ8 seen here. You can also pick one up on Autotrader using a variety of finance options, including leasing. Check out the link down below. They say looks aren't everything. That's what they tell me anyway, but in the world of facelifted cars, they are absolutely everything. They're the only thing, in fact. And luckily, the Q8 has been upgraded with a new face. The only problem is, to the untrained eye, it looks exactly the same as before. But luckily, my eye is trained, so I'm gonna show you some of the finer details. First of all, it still has this mask shape around the front, which is fine if you like your cars to look like Bane from Batman. The only thing is now, the mask now extends a bit further towards the outer edges and it has the headlight cleaning mechanism now integrated into the mask itself. You've also got this chrome effect around the inside of the single frame, these honeycomb shaped air intakes and these J or L shaped sections which were lifted from the new Audi A8 and also a flat Audi grille. It is different, but to me, it looks just too close to the previous generation car. Luckily, Audi do offer a black pack, which basically blacks out the entire front end, so you can't see that it looks exactly the same as before. Now, let me talk about these headlights. So you can get standard LEDs or matrix LEDs as an option, which essentially put out a high beam without dazzling other drivers as they come towards you, or as you get in this particular car, matrix LEDs with lasers. And essentially that's a laser spotlight that extends the range of your high beam. And you can identify that by looking at the blue ambient light on the car. They look really clever. And in fact, talking of looking clever, is actually a function to customize the DRL signature in this car using the buttons inside the vehicle. Here's number one, here's another, another, and another. Quite a clever touch, also very pointless, but I like what Audi have done there. The car is virtually identical to before when viewed from the side, but it has B-pillars with a new laser engraved model designation and new colors, including Sakir Grey, Chili Red, and Ascari Blue. And no, this is Waitomo Blue. You'd think they would supply their new car in a launch color, but that would be ridiculous. But you do get new wheel designs, ranging from 21s up to the 23s seen here. The boot, yep, you guessed it, it's exactly the same as it was before. 605 litres, that's bigger than the one in an X6 and smaller than what you get in the GLE Coupe. In the back, you get a good amount of room, including ample headroom and legroom, plus cup holders in a drop-down armrest, two USB ports, independent climate controls and heated seat controls for each rear seat, which, by the way, recline quite nicely, as well as move forward and backward. And there's even a window blind, good for kids who want to have a sleep in the shade. Okay, now for the back of the car, which I think is actually quite cool as well, mainly because of the new lights. If you opt for the top spec laser lights, what you get is this very snazzy set of OLED lights. And OLED technology, by the way, is what you normally find in computer screens and phone screens. These are separated by a little black section and the flat Audi logo. The lights themselves are very clever for a couple of reasons. One, you can customize the DRL signature just like you can with the DRLs up front and they also have a built-in proximity sensor. So if I back up away from the car, they'll actually go into their default mode and if I approach the car, either on foot or in another vehicle, look at that, they actually go on to warn people, back up away from my brand new Audi Q8 or I'll do ya. Now, this is interesting because in Britain, we drive way too close to each other all the time. So those are gonna be on every single minute of the day as far as I'm concerned, but it is in equal measures clever and pointless. As for the rest of it, you get a new lower bumper, a new rear diffuser, my favorite bit, new quad exhaust pipes, and they are real. Yes, it just goes to show peer pressure and bullying do work, because Audi have listened to our pleas. 
Don't bully anyone. Oh, by the way, let's hear this. Yeah, that's dreadful. What's new up front? Well, you might have guessed, not an awful lot. On some facelifted cars, they go further than others and Audi haven't gone very far. But there's a couple of new bits. You get some contrasting stitching up here on the dashboard, contrasting stitching on the seats, and there's now a choice of inlays. Yes, you have a choice of this particular section just here and on the door card. You can choose between carbon, aluminium, silver, and wood. This carbon stuff looks quite fetching, and I think it contrasts nicely with the piano black across the mid dashboard section and on the silver console. You also get ambient lights down here, which you can choose across, I think, four different colors. It's not the most elaborate ambient lighting system in the world, but it does look pretty cool. Right, in terms of practicality, not super impressive. The glove box is quite large and it has a pen holder, but the rest of it isn't that amazing. The door bins are kind of standard, but in here in the center console, there's almost no space whatsoever. There's only a wireless mobile phone charger and a couple of USB ports. And apart from that, not much to write home about. Audi's technology, I think, could do with a little bit of a refresh. And they have updated the software in here a little bit. For example, you now get an extra menu screen if you swipe to the left, which gives you a kind of amalgamation of all the various settings and options that you'll find by swiping around. And it's a little bit easier to find certain things than it was before. And they've finally included the option to install third-party applications, things like Spotify, TikTok, the Weather Channel, things that other manufacturers have been doing for ages. Sadly, I can't show you any of that because you need to log into an app and Audi haven't given me the app or the credentials to log in, but take my word for it, it's somewhere in there. Obviously, you also get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. Right, let's go drive it. So at the start of this video, I might have implied that I was gonna do some off-roading, but let's face it, people who drive the SQ8 are gonna drive it in places like this, towns and cities. And today, I'm in a pretty cool one. We're in Cape Town in South Africa. New city, old car. The SQ8 kind of feels exactly like the SQ8 that I drove three years ago, but that's no bad thing because it's actually quite a nice car to drive, especially as a daily. First impressions, it's really nice. All the controls are nicely damped. The suspension flows over the road really well. It's quiet. We've got double glazing all around. It's an easy car to get on with. It's also got a really nice sound system in the Vorsprung version. It bangs. So yeah, all in all, it's pleasant. Driving in new places can be stressful, but driving this in a new place isn't stressful at all. There's some pretty nifty driver assistance systems that steer, accelerate, and brake the car for you to take the hassle away, blind spot monitoring to stop you whacking into other cars accidentally when you change lanes, and the Q8 has a five-star Euro NCAP rating, so if anything goes wrong, people inside should be safe. People outside, I'm not so sure. But that being said, it was time to leave the city and head somewhere we could actually put the car through its paces. This is more like it. What a place this is. Apparently, there's all sorts of creatures around here. There's baboons and zebras and ostriches. We'll keep an eye out in case we encounter any of those. But on with the show. In terms of engine options, there's a choice of three in the new 2024 Q8. There's a 50 TDI diesel and a 55 TFSI petrol, both of which use a three liter V6. If you want extra performance though, then you're gonna have to go for the SQ8, which is the car that I'm in right now. This thing uses a four liter twin turbo V8. It makes 507 horsepower and 770 newton meters of torque. Exactly the same as it did in the previous SQ8, but I'm not complaining because it is very quick. Audi say it will officially do 0 to 62 in 4.1 seconds and 155 miles an hour flat out. But when we tested the previous generation car in Germany, it maxed out at 165 miles an hour and did 0 to 62 in 3.9. 
In terms of suspension, well, that varies depending on which version you go for. If you go for the standard Q8, you get the standard adaptive suspension. If you go for the SQ8, well, then you get air suspension and you can definitely feel the difference across the various suspension modes. So I'm in dynamic right now and the car is quite jiggly. It's very firm, but if you put it into comfort, it softens up quite nicely. It's actually quite surprising because I'm riding on the 23 inch wheels and even though it's not the plushest thing in the world, I'm actually quite surprised by how compliant it is, at least in South Africa on these particular roads. As before, you get all the clever chassis systems that make the SQ8 really nice to drive, including rear wheel steering, which turns the rear wheels in the opposite direction to the front wheels by five degrees. That also helps with maneuverability around town for a tighter turning circle. You get active anti-roll stabilization, which forces down the outside wheels to keep the car flat through the bends. And you get a clever rear diff, which basically slows down the inside wheel as you go around the corner to help it turn in and minimize understeer. All of it works really well and it's no different to what we experienced on the previous car. It's a capable performer in the bends. The mild hybrid technology also has another clever trick up its sleeve in that it can help you save petrol. So it has a coasting function which basically turns off the engine and lets the car cruise using only its inertia. So apparently that works between 34 and 99 miles per hour if you lift off where it will cruise for up to 40 seconds at a time. And apparently that has the benefit of saving you half a litre of fuel for every 62 miles that you travel. Does it work? In principle, but in the real world, I managed around 17 miles per gallon. So it clearly doesn't do an awful lot for fuel economy, a bit like Audi haven't done an awful lot to the SQ8 as a whole. So what's my verdict on the new SQ8? Well. If I'm being brutally honest, what Audi have done is they've slapped on some new headlights and pretty much called it a day. But is that the worst thing in the world? Not necessarily. The SQ8 has always been lovely to drive, very spacious, decent to look at, and ultimately a nice all-rounder. If you're looking for a decent coupe SUV that you're never gonna take off-road, then I'd definitely consider it. Mm -hmm.